Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story My dog sent an entitled parent and her kid to jail. Many years ago, I was living in a beautiful sunny southern state. I had a cute little house that was completely fenced and 5 foot fence in front, 8 foot fence on the sides, and a 10 foot chain link fence in the back. I'm fortunate enough to work from home. My office was a patio unless it was raining. My dog Sari, German Shepherd, Ratweiler Mix, kept me company. At a year old, she was a big girl at 120 pounds. She was generally very sweet and kind but protective. She was well trained but also had a knack for disappearing to play with her animal friends. So I kept her on a chain too if we were outside. High school kids in the area had the tendency to use the alleyway behind my house to get to and from school. Most would stop and say hi to Sari and give her attention. And she loved it. I honestly didn't mind. One day I noticed that anytime Sari was alone outside, some kids would rattle the back fence, throw things at it, then scream and yell at Sari. The kids would run off before I could see who they were. In case things got worse, I bought some security cameras and brought Sari with me anytime I went inside when the kids would be around. One day I had to grab some work in the house and lift Sari outside. Just for a moment. From inside I heard the fence rattle and then Sari yelp in pain. I rushed outside just in time to see a kid try to throw a rock at Sari, along with some other kids. Needless to say, I was pissed. As I rushed over to Sari, I calmly asked him, Did it ever occur to you to wonder why I keep my dog chained in a fenced yard? Then I unhooked her. Sari ran at my back fence and climbed over it. The kids started running down the alley with Sari right behind them parking away. I let her go about half a block then whistled for her. She came trotting back all happy as can be. I checked her over and gave her a treat. She was fine. A couple of hours later, one of the kids came back with his mother, the entitled parent. She came screaming. You brat! You had your dog attack my son? He was only having a fun time. He's just a boy. The kid was at least 16 years old. You scared him. It was just a joke. You had no right to do that. I'm calling the police and having that dog shot. And blah, blah, blah. I literally couldn't get a word in. Then she starts threatening me. So I called the police. The operator could hear her plain as day even though the entitled parent was at least 40 feet from me. The police showed up in about 5 minutes, 2 cars. I guess they were in the area. 4 officers. All very nice guys. 2 officers come talk to me and the other 2 talk to the mom and her son. She never stopped screaming gang cussing. I explain what happened and show the video to the officer. Show all of Sari's vet and training paperwork. And I filed a report. Ask them to press charges and the officers are pitting Sari all the while because she's demanding attention from her new friends. She has her happy face on. Yes, Sari actually smiles. The three of us and Sari on a leash go outside towards the other group. We're about 10 feet from them when Sari suddenly cuts in front of me to stop me and starts growling. The skin around her face went tight, making it look like a hair-covered skull. And the hair on her back raises up. Sari is very scary when she's like that. Screaming, the entitled mother, See? That witch raised that dog to attack black people. Racist brat. That dog needs to be put down. The two officers that were with me were African American. So no. That part always annoys me so I included it. I called back one of the officers that I had been talking to. He didn't want to come too close as Sari is showing large teeth. So I moved back towards my house. 
In as quietly as I could, I told the officer that either the mom or kid were carrying a gun. That's why Siri started getting protective. It had happened several times before. I guess to be on the side of caution or to shut me up, he decided to search the entitled mother and the kid. And she had an unregistered gun. And the kid? He had a 6-inch switchblade. Not legal in that state. So, in addition to a charge of animal cruelty, they got nailed for carrying a concealed weapon, being in possession of a firearm while on probation, resisting arrest and a couple of other charges. The mom never stopped screaming the entire time this happened while being driven away. I don't think that's how the mom or the kid expected to end the day, but I enjoyed it. Even better, I never saw her or her kid ever again, and the kid stopped harassing Siri. Next story. Never treat your staff badly on the way out, especially if you don't know where they are going. I recently resigned from my job. I was just tired and burned out and my CEO kept pushing me hard, telling me to drive further and that's just how it was. I was also moving house and commuting to work would be another 30 minutes on top of the one and a half hours I'm already doing. So enough was enough. I got so tired that I resigned. I hadn't gotten another job lined up, but that's fine. I was okay financially. As soon as I resigned, my CEO called me into the office 20 minutes later, and he asked me to leave straight away, escorted me off-site like a criminal, and wouldn't even let me say bye to the people around me, touch my laptop or clear my desk. It was like I was being fired. It was so embarrassing. No one from work got in touch to see if I was okay as he went round telling everyone he fired me and saying it went pear-shaped with her at the end so I had to let her go. Fast forward a few weeks. Well, I did find another job with one of my ex-employer's clients that used their services to do their emergency training for them. First aids and fire training. And now I'm in charge of who we use as our contractors. My new boss said, well, we normally use your old company at a cost of $37,000 a year. But if you know another company that is better, then switch. I have no loyalty to them. Well, switch I have done. If my old boss hadn't treated me so badly, I definitely would have used their services. But treat me like that? Then say goodbye to a very important client. Next story. Karen demands me, serve me and my family. Well, this is gonna be fun. Hey everybody, this happened a little while ago, but I'm finally getting around to posting it. So I'm a college student and this happened near the end of this previous semester a few months ago. I was just finishing a long day on campus attending classes and doing homework. I ended the day with a meeting with a professor who was the head of a program on campus, so I was dressed in business casual to make a good impression. When I left campus after the meeting, my wife texted me she had gone to see a movie with some of her friends and wouldn't be back until late. So I decided to go grab a bite to eat at one of my favorite restaurants on my way home, since I wouldn't get to eat dinner with her. I stopped at a place that is well known for breakfast all day. So I stepped inside and put my name down for a table. While chatting with the hostess as I work in the food industry part-time, I liked to chat to restaurant workers. Once my name was down, she said it would only be a minute or two until my table was ready. As the hostess went into the back for a minute, I realized I had a coupon for the restaurant in my car. And I decided to go retrieve it. Right then, I hear the door open. And as I turn around, I see a Karen and her four kids standing behind me. Okay, let's get this information out of the way. Child one was the older and about 13. And the other child was about 9. Now to set the stage, I was still in business casual. With my best jeans and a blue button down shirt with a slight scruff of a beard from several days of not shaving. 
making me look a bit older than my actual age of 24. I was also wearing a lanyard that I carry my keys on. Highly recommend this actually, as it greatly reduces lost keys incidents. All in all, I'm not surprised she initially confused me for some kind of manager. But as we all know, first impressions are all that most Karens retain. She says, Yes, I need a table of six for my family. Um, I don't work. She cuts me off and says, Ah, uh, did you hear me? I need a table for six. See it us and put our names on the list. Really, how did you get a job as a manager if you don't know how to help customers? Now to set the stage for how I am about to react to this Karen. I'm a major nerd and I'm proud of it. I'm also well known by friends and family for being able to quote lines from movies. And one of my favorite movies of all time is A Princess Pride. It's a perfect movie. And one of the best ever made, I adore it. And my dream is to one day open a Princess Pride themed restaurant. Now I have pretty much memorized the entire script of Princess Pride. And by chance I watched it earlier that day while working on a homework assignment. Yes, I sometimes play movies while I work on homework. So the movie was fresh in my mind. And somehow I'm not sure how an idea formed in my head. And I thought I'd have some fun with this Karen. I tell her, look, I'm tired. The honor stinking son fired me. And thank you for bringing up such a painful subject. While you're at it, why don't you give me a nice paper cut and pour lemon juice on it? Karen was stunned, splattering for words that she clearly didn't expect a response like this. Her first kid was grinning and looking like he's trying to stop himself from snickering. I'm guessing he's seen the movie and recognized the line. Me wanting to get on with this and jar carrying back to her senses so I can have some more fun. I say, anybody want a peanut? Well, I never. How dare you talk to a customer like that? You're a terrible manager. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Karen's still not getting it. What is wrong with you? I should tell your boss to fire you for treating customers like that. You should be ashamed of yourself. Her other child tries to tell her, Mommy, I think this guy... Shh, let me sort this out. Then she turns back to me. Give me your manager. Beat it, or I'll call the prude squad. Karen was getting red in the face and splattering in anger. Right then the hostess comes out. It is quickly clear she heard most, if not all, of the interaction as she's smiling and trying not to laugh. The hostess says, Sir, I can seat you now. Deciding to keep up the fun and not able to help myself at this point, I turned to the hostess and asked, I don't mean to pry, but you don't happen to have six fingers on your right hand, right? Both the hostess and child one are trying not to laugh while Karen is fuming. However, before she can explode, the hostess whisks me away to my table. I try to ignore Karen from that point on and start perusing the menu. As I'm trying to decide between a pancake breakfast or steak and eggs, I see the hostess taking the Karen and her family now joined by her husband to their table. The Karen spots me, glares, and has her kid sit down before she storms over to my table with her husband to back her up. And I prepare for a little more fun, hoping she will say something I can work with. You should be ashamed of yourself. I've never been treated like that in a restaurant, let alone by management. Even if you're on a break, you should be helping customers if they ask for it. What's your name, huh? I'm reporting you to corporate. Me praising the heavens she gave me the chance to use the golden line. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. The Karen looks stunned. Oh, the husband's cheeks balloon out and I hear a hiss of air escaping his burst lips as he tries to stop himself from exploding in laughter right there. I know now he's also seen the movie and understands exactly what's going on. I can now see Karen start to realize what's happening. Right then, an awesome dude who is a guy in a post behind me turns around and says, this guy's not a manager lady. 
Can't you tell that by now? I can see the gears finally turning in Karen's head as she realizes her mistake and the situation she put herself in. But still wanting to save face, she says, Well, there was no need to be so rude. Even if you're not an employee, you could have been nicer to us, or at least called an employee for us. My response? That would be totally inconceivable. At this point, the husband deserves an award for holding in laughter as he manages to get out. Honey, this guy doesn't work here. Let's just leave him be. The Karen concedes and salts back to her table. Grinning like a madman, I return to the menu and end up ordering the pancake breakfast. P.S. I like breakfast for dinner. The Karen and her family also order and ends up getting done before me. And I eat slowly by myself due to the need to play games on my phone while eating. As a Karen and her family are leaving, I can't help myself getting in one last laugh. And I raise my hand to wave as I say, Bye bye boys. Have fun storming the castle. At this point, laughter cannot be contained. And the husband, one of the kids, and the hostess and several patrons start laughing. Even the Karen calmed down by now and realizing what I'm doing, cannot help but let out the smallest of grins. Though she refuses to look at me out of embarrassment. Then my day is made as I hear a voice from the booth behind me continue. Think it'll work? Me grinning. It would take a miracle. Both of us? Bye bye The family walks out and I give the awesome dude a fist bump. My server, who had heard the whole thing, brought me a pair of sausages on the house as thanks for the entertainment. And that, my friends, is how I defeated the Karen with the help of the Prince's Pride. Next story. No mom, dad, younger brother, and aunt. I'll keep on doing my little tradition. I, 27 female, had an older brother, 25 male, who died in 2014. He was the older brother any girl wanted, and we were close. He taught me valuable lessons in life such as cooking, driving, and never giving up. Showed me anime, manga, would go on little road trips and we would flat out ignore our parents' favoritism with my younger brother. Sadly, he died when a shooting happened and he was not a criminal. He was only eating and it happened and there was an investigation and police found he was not involved in any illegal activity. Just one of the bullets killed him instantly. He was only 25 and I was 19 in 2014. I would lie if I said that I didn't fall into a deep depression. It came to the point where I stopped eating and lost around 55 pounds in a month and a half after his passing. I only drank water and milk to fill me up. I didn't want to get better. Until one day, my former sister-in-law called me to tell me that he left me some things. I met up with her and the stuff he left behind was an album with Polaroid pictures of our crazy adventures, graphic anime tees, and a chain with both of our initials. I was in tears. And I decided to get some help because he would love to see me happy and not just die of sadness. It's been years since his passing and I'm doing a lot better. And I have a tradition that, on his birthday, I would leave flowers on his grave. I only stay two minutes then leave after singing him happy birthday. My therapist said this was a good idea. However, my parents, younger brother and my aunt decided to have an intervention thinking religiously that I was doing something satanic. That I was calling out the dead. That they should have thrown the things he left me in the garbage. I was shocked and told him that I will not stop doing this tradition and that this is their older son. That if they keep behaving like this, I won't feel bad at all for having to go no contact with any of them. They kept on yelling at me and my aunt went as far as to throw holy water at me. I had it and told them that when they stop being nuts, I will talk. But as of today, I want nothing to do with them. And I left before any of them could say anything. It's been a week since the incident and I have plugged their numbers. I just saved myself from toxic family members and I will not go back there ever again. 
And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.